I got a couple interesting questions from some of my students that I thought worth worth sharing. Pierre had asked me about that there's a song of mine with the guitar band called Mulholland. And at the beginning, I play this extended intro. And actually, I got a couple of questions about this. <laughs> The first one was from Brian and it was about what am I thinking of when I do that? Now, let me just say for starters that uh, I consider myself barely competent at doing such things. You know, the people who are great at it, Sonny Rollins, Joshua Redman, Chris Potter, to name a few. Playing a cappella introductions or cadenzas is like, it's a tough thing. And so I, what I do is I try to baby step my way towards feeling more confident about it by by practicing it on gigs. So like within a set or two sets, there might be a tune that I identify as like, you know what, I'll do it before that or I'll do it at the end of that or something. Just a little bit to get comfortable with it. Um, I used to be extremely terrified by it. I'm a little bit better these days, but um, I just try to set up something. So the first part of it is that I try to set up something that with Mulholland, if you go watch that video, you'll see, I just had a fragment, an idea, and that was it. I'm, and uh, I kind of work with that. And my main thing is just keeping the time. So I'm trying to pretend that the band is still playing with me, even though they're not. That's the goal. And keeping that, if, the more I have like an ostinato going in my head, then that's my anchor. And then I can move away from that. So at a certain point, I'm like, all right, been here long enough. And in that Mulholland video, I stay there way too long, uh, but whatever, it's live, it happened, there it is. Uh, but then I moved to, I think I moved up a minor third or something. So I'm just, that's a thing where I'm like, what if I move this up a minor third? You know, one thing you can do to practice things like that is experiment with playing a short fragment of something repetitively over and over. And then, um, and this leads to the second part of the question, and then start to move it in your mind before you move your fingers, if that makes sense. So actually I was doing this last night. I was playing a really repetitive figure. <laughs> And then I thought to myself, what, what is this? What are, the, what are the scale degrees or numbers? How can I think about what I'm doing it? All the while, I'm still playing it. You know, I'm still playing the idea. So like repetitive over and over. Now I'm starting to think, what, the, what is this thing? Okay, what if I moved it up a whole step? What would that be? What would that sound like? Okay, so this leads to Pierre's question, which is how do you practice stuff like that? Well, that's it. What I'm saying right now is kind of how I practice it. By playing something very repetitive, and once you're locked in, it's like, I think of it as sort of, um, it's like RAM, like computer RAM or something. You're trying to slowly offload some of the thought process to your RAM so that you can free up brain power, or CPU power, to something else, such as where am I gonna go next? Or what's around the next corner? Where would I like to take this? But you can't do it if you're thinking, you know, actively thinking through it. So I hope that makes some sense, you know? So I'm like doing this bom bo do da bom bo do da da bom bo do da right? Over and over, um. And now I'm thinking in my head, like where, what if I went to another place? So by practicing that beforehand, by practicing that figure, in all sorts of different directions, chromatically, in whole steps, in minor thirds, in the circle of fourths and fifths, those kinds of things, then I've already got, you know, I know I can go to those places and I've sort of been there before. It frees me up to be creative in the moment with making that decision sort of spontaneously, if that makes sense. Um, but my best way, so Pierre says, um, I love that Mulholland piece, your solo and intro are just fantastic. How do you practice such a thing such as hearing in your mind something precise while you go far away, playing other stuff without getting lost in time, without losing the place where you are. Um, do you have a stereo brain? Is one part of your brain playing something and the other part is hearing something else? That's, that's kind of what I'm, in a, in a sense, that's what I'm saying. That's how I practice it is that way. You do have to, you have to practice developing, I like that phrase, a stereo brain. That's kind of what you need to do. Last year at the, um, at the Inside Outside retreat, at the saxophone retreat, uh, Josh Redman and I were, well, he was doing a, he was doing a, a clinic, but then we ended up playing together on stage and we, were, we just did some duets. 
And one of the things that he said that stuck with me was, because we, we played a standard together and just, you know, no band, just the two of us going back and forth. And we're interacting and trading, et cetera, and sort of commenting like on what the other person's playing. And Josh said something really cool. He, because somebody asked in the, like, how are you doing that? And he said, well, I'm doing my own thing, you know, but it's like, I'm minding my own store, but I'm also paying attention to what Bob's doing in his store. Some, I'm butchering it, but it was something along those lines. Like you in effect are splitting your attention or splitting your hearing. Um, you're paying attention to what you're doing, but you have to unload some of the thought process and be able to go a little bit on autopilot with something so that you can free up attention to listen to other people. And this really applies with just improvising in general, right? playing with a band, you want to have some of your attention on what, I mean, I don't know, it's not like a numerical split that you can say, 50% on you and 50% and 25% on the bass player and 25 on the piano. It's not like that, you know, it's an art, not a science, but some amount of your attention has to be available to listen to what's going on in your surroundings. And then you can comment on it. And there's, that's where you get commentary and interplay and all that great stuff. So just, back to the idea of how to practice it, I think small, tiny little things, even sort of mechanism exercises, I was talking about this in a couple of vlogs ago, short repetitive things that you can play over and over and over. You wanna be careful that your brain doesn't just wander, you know, aimlessly, but you start to practice freeing up brain power to go in another direction. Uh, it's, it's really helpful.